These overseas headwinds for Apple dragging the stock down last couple sessions and sparking a broader sell-off. Our dear Bosa is watching that in today's Tech Check. Hi, D. In China, the ever-present Apple risk lurking in the background until, of course, it isn't. So it's once again front and center, this time putting the company on track to lose some $200 billion in market value in just two sessions. Two issues are emerging here. I'll break it down for you. One, that report that China is restricting the use of iPhones at central government agencies. Tim Cook, of course, has been on this mission to diversify its supply chain to India in particular, but the company still currently relies on 19 percent of total revenue from China. The fear is that the ban on the government side could expand to state-owned enterprises, and that could put a real dent in sales because some of China's biggest companies are state-owned. The second issue here hitting shares, a potential resurgence of Huawei. Its latest smartphone being seen as the first significant threat to Apple's dominance in the market in years. Huawei, you might remember, it is the giant Chinese national telco equipment company that has been at the center of Beijing-Washington tensions a number of times over the years. The latest, the U.S. export ban, it essentially decimated Huawei's smartphone business by restricting its access to Google's Android, the operating system which its phones use. Now, this chart I'm going to show you, it shows you the winner of that move. Far and away, it's Apple. Its market share in China went from 56 percent to nearly 70 percent in just a few years, largely because of the effects of that export ban. B of A writes that Huawei's new iPhone could, new phone, excuse me, it's certainly not an iPhone, its new phone could be an opportunity for it to increase shipments and regain market share at the expense of Apple. Now, this also has broader implications. The phone uses an advanced chip made by a Chinese chip maker, SMIC, and that really represents a breakthrough for the country's semi-ambitions. And it's also an indication of how those U.S. sanctions have really rallied the Chinese state and its industry to work together to, for achievements like this. The timing also interesting for years as tensions ratcheted up and U.S. sanctions hurt homegrown companies like Huawei. Many have wondered, including myself, when China would strike back in a significant way. Now that it's here and it's affecting Apple, where does it stop, guys? I mean, it opens up a whole new chapter in, this, in the tensions between the two. So on the on the point you just made about the chips and semiconductors, that's pretty interesting. So is it did, did this defy expectations that Huawei would be able to even do this, make such an advanced chip in this phone because of the sanctions? Yeah. So SMC is making the chips, which Huawei is using, and SMC has SMIC, excuse me, has always been sort of where the hope rests. It's a state-backed organization in China that has been trying to make more and more advanced chips. This is, but it's still, I have to note far behind what U.S. chip designers are able to manufacture and produce. So it is a breakthrough, and it could signal that they could have more going forward. But in a way, it also highlights the challenges, because it's still nowhere near, you know, the nanometer chips that our companies can produce. Yeah, definitely getting the attention of some uh, select committees on the Hill uh, this morning, D. Pretty interesting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deirdre Bosa on Apple.